It's playoff time and we're here at Raider Stadium in Ashland, Oregon for the opening round of the NAI Football Championship Series between Kansas Wesleyan and Southern Oregon University. Hello, I'm Ryan Thies alongside Jack Schneider. Welcome to the Coyote Game Day pregame show. Once again, plenty to talk about in Coyote football. Yeah, we've got a lot going on. Really hectic week here in Coyote football with it being the playoffs. We've got an interview with head coach Matt Drinkle as well as Craig Howard of Southern Oregon. So stick with us. Now, before we get into the matchup we have at hand here with Southern Oregon, we'd like to congratulate some of the all KCAC selections, and we got a whole mess of them. First, we'll start with honorable mention, offensive lineman Maverick Bessinger, defensive lineman Marquill Jones-Walker, and defensive back Mike Guerrero round out the honorable mention. KCAC second team selections are running back Miles Balthazar, wide receiver Albert Giesen, fullback Joe Vela, Offensive lineman Aiden Olson, defensive lineman Marcus Bradley and Christian McQueen, linebacker Matt Myers, defensive back Tyrone Wright, and kick returner Londarius Thomas. And now for the first team all KCAC, including the conference player of the year, quarterback Jake Curran, rounds out a great season with both of those honors. Fullback Kobe Donahue, tight end Mitch Kufal. Offensive lineman Arias Brown, who was a unanimous first team selection out of all the coaches in the conference. Utility man Kelly Cordova and defensive back Sequente Marks. So a great honor for all of those players on the Kansas Wesleyan football roster, but they got a huge task ahead of them here against the defending NAI national champions Southern Oregon University. And we're here out in Ashland getting ready for the game tomorrow. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at some of the top 10 stat ratings that Southern Oregon has. They are number one in the nation in punt yards per attempt. And Jackson, I know how you strongly believe in the importance of special teams. And they are number two in third down conversions at 53.7%. Fifth in kickoff return yards per attempt. Sixth in first downs per game. Seventh in punt return yards per game and number eight in total scoring offense. So a lot coming from Southern Oregon, but if we take a look at Kansas Wesleyan. But Kansas Wesleyan brings a lot to the table as well. Kansas Wesleyan is ranked number four in third down conversions, number four in total passing offense, number four in total sacks, number four in first downs per game, number four in total offense per game, number four in total scoring offense, number six in passing offense per game, number six in pass efficiency, number seven in sacks per game, and number nine in scoring defense per game. So the Coyotes match up very well with this Southern Oregon team. And a lot of those stats that Kansas Wesleyan ranks high in are ahead of Southern Oregon. Even though there's a few special teams stats mixed in there. Kansas Wesleyan still in scoring offense. They have scored seven more points all year. So these guys are neck and neck. Yeah, they're very evenly matched offensively. Two high octane offenses. Kansas Wesleyan likes to mix up the tempo, sometimes speed it up, sometimes slow it down, really catch defenses off guard. But Southern Oregon likes to just put the pedal to the metal all game long, run as many plays as they can. And that high octane offense that we're going to see for the first time is going to be really, really interesting to watch. So now we'll go ahead and take a look at what head coach of Kansas Wesley and Matt Drinkle had to say in our interview with him. So now we're finally here in Ashland. It's been a long, hectic week, but how have you really prepared the team with all the travel and just getting everything situated and also on the football field? We're really fortunate. Mike Herman, uh, our athletic director, helped out and basically set up the entire thing by himself uh, single-handedly, and it's been a first-class trip the entire way. And that really helped take a lot off of the coaches' plates and having to typically do travel, uh, our travel routine and then the players too, so we can focus more on the game and our preparation. So that's kind of helped us get a little bit ahead of the curve. And, you know, we were actually so far ahead of yesterday that our practice was a little bit more like a, just kind of a run through and review and we're ready to get out there and execute today. A lot of the players have never been to Oregon before and some of them even haven't even flown on a plane. What have you seen from some of these guys just having fun on this really business trip? Yeah, I think uh, you know once we <laughs> when we were in takeoff on the plane, when you heard a couple of those guys just start yelling and screaming because they didn't know what was going on, I think that was a a good way to kind of get the thing started and kicked off. And now that we're 
here and going through our routine and get out and practice and, and make it much more like home out here or used to it. I think that's helped out tremendously. Um, I think getting out here a day early to get acclimated to the weather and the, the low humidity, those things have are really helped acclimate everybody to the whole process of what's going to happen this evening. So you're matched up against Southern Oregon, who is the defending national champions. They did lose their quarterback, who was the United Player of the Year, but still coming with an electric offense. But your offense has outscored them this season only by seven points. So what do you see between these two firepower offenses? Uh, actually, there's a lot of similarities. They do a little bit more one back than we do. Two, uh, than we do, we're predominantly two back because we have Colby Donnie, who, who's you know as good of a fullback as there is. So. We actually, uh, uh, if you look at the, the plays that we run and schemes, formations we use, there are a ton of similarities in there. The only difference is, you know, their quarterback uh, has a huge arm um, and just runs unbelievably. So they're a little bit like us in the sense that they spread their run game out over the course of about three different guys. And, uh, you know, they have some perimeter players, uh, you know, skilled guys on the edge that just do a great job. They're similarities like I said you know you even look into the up tempo stuff and uh, what we call RPOs which are run pass options so kind of runs and passes packaged together that you build in and uh, you know they, they, you spread you out and make you defend the entire width of the field and, and we're in the same boat so it'll be it'll be a fun game to watch for, for sure if you like points is this the best offense that you guys have seen so far this year and how big of a challenge is it going to be for your defense I think so. You know, Tabor was really, you know, they, they were outstanding too, you know, they're uh, and Ottawa and those guys uh, uh, have really good players and and the scheme stuff that they do is tremendous. So the one thing too that I guess uh, what Southern Oregon does that is similar to us is we, you know, they don't really scheme people to death. It's, hey, this is their offense. These are the things they run and they'll get into those things throughout the course of a game. So they, they have a much more carryover week to week where you see some teams in our league really kind of will scheme things more. Uh, uh, to take advantage of either your personnel or, or certain fronts or coverages that you're in. So, uh, you know, I think they're for sure historically as good on offense over the last three years as anybody's been in the entire country. And, and you can tell by watching their style of play, they, they go meet with the, the Oregon Ducks and talk about football. And, and they're, uh, the thing you'll notice, too, that is really the driving force on their offensive line plays so well. A bunch of, you know, I think they're about 6'4", 305 across the board. And uh, they are well coached, and they move well, and are physical guys. So it'll be a it'll be a tremendous test. Now there's a lot of all KCAC selections on your team, including Jake Curran, the conference player of the year. Do you see those guys really stepping up here today? Because it could be their last game. Yeah, they better. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's one thing too. You always, you know, when we look at our scheme stuff that we do is. Man, who are your best 11 guys? What do those guys do well? So you'll see the ball in Jake Curran's hands a whole bunch today and and uh, let him, you know, who's obviously extremely talented but a great decision maker and a great playmaker and kind of distribute the ball and run the offense. And, uh, you know, defensively too, you know, Tyrone Wright, Sequente Marks, and Marcus Bradley, Matt Myers, all those guys, you know, we need them to come up and play really well. And, you know, we uh, a Tabor game that we lost, we didn't have Kufal and we didn't have Sequente in that game. And now they're both back and playing and, we're excited to see those guys turn loose and go. So what's the excitement level at here for today's game? Uh, right now, it's kind of that weird, like, calm before the storm. It's like if you ever ran high school, you know, if you ever ran track where you have to report for your event, and then it's all that time in between where you just run through the scenarios in your head a million times. We're at that stage right now where I think our kids would rather just prefer, and I know we would, just prefer wake up, go get our pads on, go warm up, and let's play. So we're... Uh, Luckily, we get a little bit more time to talk about, talk through some things and, and get our last little bit of preparation in and get ready to go. We'll get over to the stadium here a couple hours beforehand and, and uh, get our guys start getting their minds cleared and focused and seeing, envisioning what's going to happen before it does. Sounds good. All right. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. And now for the first time on Coyote Game Day pregame show, we've got an interview with the opposing head coach, Craig Howard, who has a, a lustrous resume. He was the national champion last year and he really was the head teacher of Tim Tebow, and we had the opportunity to sit down with him. Looking at Kansas Wesleyan football last year, they're 2-9 and nine, and then 0-2 and in FCS history, but this year they've only lost one game to a really good ranked opponent in Tabor. What does that really speak against uh, your opponent, your really research and, and playing them this week? Well, I think winning breeds confidence. You know, the guys are 10-1, and one. they've only lost one game this year, so, you know, it doesn't really matter what happened last year, 
these guys believe they can win. It was, I think, the best uh, record in school history. Uh, I believe that the college and the community are probably on fire back there, doing so well this year. So you get in the national playoffs, any team can beat any other team. And, you know, it's a tournament that uh, it's one and done or survivor you go on. So, you know, uh, we were lucky last year that we were able to win the thing. And, and uh, you know, this is a new year. and. Uh, we drew the first opponent, Kansas Wesley, so we're excited about the game. Now you guys are ranked 8th in all of NAIA in total scoring offense, and ranked 4th is Kansas Wesley, just 7 points ahead of you. Do you see this as really just two really high-powered offenses going against each other? Well, again, they always say the offense puts people in the stands and defense wins championships, so somebody's going to have to play some defense today, and hopefully uh, both teams play well on defense and in the special teams. But both offenses provide some firepower that's going to be tough to stop and uh, I'm excited to see how it shakes out. You know, their quarterback uh, has had a fantastic year. Uh, what's his name? Balthazar. Balthazar. Mm -hmm. Running back is a fine running back as there is in the country. So, and they have a, a bunch of receivers, from, some from Kansas, some from Texas, but they're all pretty good. Now, do you see your playoff run last year? And some of these guys know how the FCS really works out because on Kansas Wesleyan, nobody's played in this situation before. Does that give your team a little bit more of an edge? Well, I think you know playoff experience is important, and uh, you know our, our boys have uh, been in a lot of these games, and so uh, I believe that'll help us. You know, it'll only help us so long though, because uh, by halftime they'll have playoff experience as well. But uh, I think the more experience you have going into a, a, a tournament like this, the better it'll help you. And uh, last year, most of your playoff games were on the road. And so how, how does it feel to have the first round here at home, you know, with all this momentum for your team? Yeah, you know, last year almost every game we were kind of road warriors uh, traveling across the country, going to Montana, Chicago, and Daytona. And, you know, uh, it's really fun to be at home and play in front of our home fans. I think it'll be a real treat for them to see a good football team like Kansas Wesleyan come into our place and play a great high uh, college football game. These uh, NAI games are as exciting a football as you can watch. Now you guys are seasoned veterans in playoff. What is the difference between regular season um, preparation as opposed to postseason preparation? What do you have to do different? And what What does it feel like now? Yeah, I, you know, I think the one of the things with postseason preparation is that you know you're seeing a new opponent that you don't know much about, don't even know what colors they are, the mascot, you know. So you you know you got a short window of time to learn as much as you can about your opponent. You know, the huddle and the film exchange helps you with that. But when you really haven't seen them play, you know, you're just really not sure the level of football in their league, the level of football and the speed and, you know, all those things. you got to test out your opponent early in the game, find out, you know, exactly how good they are and how, exactly how fast they are. Because uh, playoffs are totally different than regular season games. Now let's go ahead and meet some of the stat leaders First with Southern Oregon. Jackson, who do you got? For Southern Oregon, they're mainly led by their quarterback, Tanner Trozen, who has 135.5 in passer efficiency and has completed 150 of 234 completions this season and has 10 passing touchdowns to just four interceptions and averages 169 yards per game. On the ground, they're led by Melvin Mason, who has 130 carries for 674 yards, 9 touchdowns, and averages 67.4 yards a game. And in the receiving end, Turan Togia, 36 catches for 385 yards, 4 touchdowns, and 42.8 yards per game. So a great offense coming from Southern Oregon, as we know. We saw them in the national championship game last year. They were very electric, but so is Kansas Wesleyan. They have outscored these Southern Oregon Raiders this season, only by seven points, so still pretty close. But on the offensive side of the ball for Kansas Wesleyan, once again, Jake Curran, the KCAC Player of the Year, 160.4 pass efficiency, 204 completions in 342 attempts, 28 touchdowns opposed to 10 interceptions and 294 yards per game is the average for Jake Curtin. Rushing we got Miles Balthasar 141 carries 672 yards 10 touchdowns averages 61.1 yards per game and then receiving Joe Vela has been a popular target for Jake Curran 45 catches 829 yards five touchdowns and he's averaging 75.4 yards so Great offenses coming here between these two teams. 
Really looking forward to this one. Yeah, this is going to be incredible, but it's going to be a huge task for both defenses to slow these offenses down. And the defense that can adapt the best in this short, weak turnaround is going to be the one that comes out victorious. Now, there's been a, a little bit of a buzz amongst the campus, especially around the football team, of these things called Massey Ratings. And it's a, a website that really is a computer system that has a bunch of formulas through it and garners predictions for football games all through different le levels, including the NAI. And they brought out their predictions for the football championship series in the NAI. And it gives Kansas Wesleyan their win probability of 1% opposed to 99% for Southern Oregon. How much do you buy into this, Jackson? You know, statistics mean a lot, but you don't play a game on a computer. You play it on the field, and here's why. These computer ratings might be a mathematical formula, but we've got a few here that are just plain wrong. Kansas Wesleyan against Waldorf opening the season with just a 31% chance of winning, and the Coyotes ran away with that one 34-9. The next week, the Coyotes hosted Midland and had just a 40% chance of winning that one and ran away with that one 55-37 as well. Finally, going into conference play, the Coyotes had just a 26% chance of winning and were favored to, er, to lose by 8 to Sterling, and the Coyotes came away with that win by a touchdown. Against Southwestern, the Coyotes again only favored to win that one by 3 points and shut out the Mountain Builders 42-0. You come into the game against Ottawa, Coyotes only a 45% chance of winning and were picked to lose by three points. The Coyotes won that one by 10. And then if you look at Southern Oregon's side of things, here's one against Montana Tech where Southern Oregon had a 66% chance to win that and they fell to the Montana Tech ore diggers. So a lot of numbers game being thrown around here. And it also says that the defense is going to give up 52 points, something they haven't done this season and haven't even really come close to doing. They gave up 37 points earlier in the year to Midland, but in the second half it was mostly the two deep guys. Yeah, the Coyotes had a 49-7 to lead at halftime of that one against Midland, and it was really just mop-up duty in the second half that really gave up all of those points to Midland. And so that statistic in itself, you could look at it as a bit of a lie, but other than that, the Coyotes really haven't given up more than like 21 points at the most on defense. Well, we will see what will actually happen between these two teams later today. You can follow the link at the kwcoyotes.com website. It is a pay-per-view game here because it is the NAI opening round of the football championship series. But I'm excited to see it. I'm sure Jackson is as well. We are excited to be here in Ashland, Oregon as well. Big thanks to the communications and the athletics department back at Kansas Wesleyan for sending us on this trip. And also be on the lookout for Traveling with the Yotes series on the KW Coyotes Twitter page. But until then, I've been Ryan Thies for Jack and Schneider. Thank you for watching the Coyote Game Day pregame show and Roll Yotes. Roll Yotes.